Before we get started, if you're enjoying this content, you can do us a favor by subscribing to our YouTube channel and ringing the bell. That'll let the algorithm know that you like this content and it will help us produce more. I think it's a great idea to just start getting experience uh, with something somewhere, even if it's not your favorite thing. Welcome to Honest Ecommerce, a podcast dedicated to cutting through the BS and finding actionable advice for online store owners. I'm your host, Chase Clymer, and I believe running a direct-to-consumer brand does not have to be complicated or a guessing game. On this podcast, we interview founders and experts who are putting in the work and creating real results. I also share my own insights from running our top Shopify consultancy, Electric Eye. We cut the fluff in favor of facts to help you grow your e-commerce business. Let's get on with the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Honesty Commerce. I'm your host, Chase Clymer. And today, I'm welcoming to the show another Ohioan. That's fantastic. Charles McElroy. <laughs> Charles is coming to us from Gold Leaf. Uh, he is the founder and chief creative over there. And it's a printing and design company focused on botanical science. How are you doing today? Doing great, Chase. Thanks for having me on. Oh, absolutely. So for the uninitiated, could you just give us a quick background on like what the products are over at Goldleaf? Yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> Goldleaf does require a little bit of explanation indeed. Um, we're simply put a, a printing company, but more specifically, we focus on making the um, complex science behind different botanicals. Uh, beautiful and approachable. So we do a lot of education, uh, infographics, uh, guided journals, that kind of thing. Uh, absolutely. I mean, you guys create some really beautiful products. Um, so definitely anyone anyone listening, go check it out. Uh, obviously, we'll give you some more information about the products at the end of the, of the episode. Um, but you know, l- l- take me back, I guess, to what was going on in your life before you started the business? Where did this Where did this idea come from? <laughs> yeah, good question. So i I kind of cut my teeth in the e or in the um, well, yeah, e commerce space, but entrepreneur space uh, with another brand called uh, Noble, which was a kind of bespoke uh, denim company. Um, it It wasn't uh, necessarily my passion. Uh, my my business partner partner it was his brainchild, and I was kind of there. Uh, to lend operational support, um, and kind of, kind of help bring it to life. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, it was a really fun and, and educational journey, but, um, he suffered from a, a lot of burnout, which I think a lot of entrepreneurs do and, uh, wanted to, to change it up, do something else. So we opted to sell the company and from the bones of that, I, I started Goldleaf, which, which is more in line with my passion. So, you know, I, I was able to utilize uh, a lot of the learnings that I that I had with my time uh, at the denim company, and since it was sort of in the I guess high fashion world, uh, we knew a lot of creatives, a lot of great photographers. Um, I, I you know I learned about product development, um, and you know had a, had a whole bunch of designers uh, in my digital Rolodex and. Uh, that was kind of my jumping off point for starting Gold Leaf, which I, I'd kind of been batting around in my mind for, for years before pulling the trigger. And, you know, Gold Leaf is, is a perfect mix for, for what I like to do, which is it, to marry the creative side with the analytical side. So, you know, you have a subject like, uh, like cannabis or coffee. Um, you know, I, I always love nerding out on the science behind things. And after doing some research, there, there wasn't really anything, uh, that it, was was approaching the cannabis space and doing it doing it right. Um, this was back in about 2015, and you know the the legal cannabis industry was very different then. Um, there was no tasteful design. Um, there were very few brands who weren't what I would call just stoner culture, and that's unfortunate. You know, I I, I I'm aware of the the different benefits that cannabis has as a, a medicine, um, as a food, as, as many things. And, you know, t- painting it with that mature clinical brush was something that just wasn't done. And so I was excited to kind of use my, my design prowess and, and connecting it with the information and, and, you know, kind of focusing on the, the UX for, for each of our pieces. And that's kind of where the, the idea came from. Um, Goldleaf is a botanical science company, but we started in the cannabis space intentionally because nobody was doing it right. Um, and so we were able to stick our flag in the ground and uh, garner a glowing reputation for 
I, I guess like the the normalization that we contributed to basically bringing uh, bringing the torch for for education in the cannabis space. And, you know, that translates to education for for bud tenders and people who are are getting into that side of business themselves, like B2B, uh, as well as anybody who just likes to nerd out on cannabis or potentially uh, cultivators or medical patients, cooks and, and culinary experts even. So um, Goldleaf really, really, really loves the niche. So we're super niche. And thanks to the glories of the internet, we're able to connect with uh, all the all the folks out there who share that uh, affinity for all of those um, very specific interests with, within you know the the plant science world. Oh uh, yeah, you guys are doing some really cool stuff. And like, I got I got two things that I really I wanted to kind of bring back up that you just you spoke to. And uh, the first one being that your kind of your history with the previous experience at the previous brand really helped catapult you into you know taking this leap and doing this on your own. For those out there listening, um I don't want to put words in your mouth. It's hard to ask this question without kind of doing some of that, but it's like would you say that uh <laughs> if you don't have the idea yet, but you still feel you want to be an entrepreneur, you want to get into this kind of e-commerce space, would you say go go work at an agency or go work at a, a, another e-commerce brand to kind of cut your teeth and learn what you like and don't like? Is that a good path to take? Yeah, I I really think it is. I mean, you you nailed it with you don't know what you don't know and um i don't think i would have had the the ambition to take on a a company that focuses on a product without my experience uh, at that at that denim company learning about product design and you know what it takes to kind of iterate on something improve something connect with the supply chain all of that stuff would have made my eyes glaze over you know years back um but it, they're just words. It, none of it, no single thing is too difficult. Um, but you just have to be able to wrap your mind around all of it. So if, if somebody is trying to land on uh, a new product and they have the ambition and the interest, uh, to have the business, um, I think it's a great idea to just start getting experience, uh, with something somewhere, even if it's not your favorite thing. Uh, chances are, uh, it'll, you, you know, be a, a stepping stone to something that you do enjoy or unveil things about yourself that you you maybe didn't know before that can lead to something promising. Absolutely. I mean, I think uh, just with entrepreneurship in general, like you, I think when you realize you don't like something, you just learn that you don't want to do that anymore. And I think that that's a learning experience in and of itself. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> The best teacher. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing I kind of wanted to bring up is the products themselves that you're doing. Uh, now, they're amazing. They're beautiful, but you're not really reinventing the wheel as far as like what you're 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 making. You know, it's printing. Pa it's paper products, it's journals, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. But where you made that differentiation was the uh, the subject matter that you are bringing to, to, and the kind of the specifics of the niche of it. Um, and I kind of what I wanted to highlight there is you don't need to like invent a new product. You just need to niche it and market it up in an appropriate way. Um, and so I, th I thought that was fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I, people have said that to me from day one um, about just it being a printing company, which is something very traditional and simple. Um, but yeah, we, we basically made it our own um, by, by uh, focusing so heavily on design and information and authority uh, like we we connect with um, top experts in in the world for virtually every subject we talk about. So it's not just me or or my design assistants working on these things uh, in a bubble. Um, we we spend tons of time researching, um, interviewing, iterating before we come out with any new journal or any new infographic. Um, and like I said, virtually every one of them is is validated by experts. Um, so that, that was the differentiator there. Um, again, in, in the cannabis space that, that was non-existent, uh, originally now, it, now it's kind of become the, the rite of passage or, or the standard, which is really great. Um, and you know, gold leaf is, is now branching out into other botanical subjects and we're kind of following the same methodology. So like with coffee, we connected with, um, you know, expert importers, uh, cuppers or you know the the people who will will do the cupping when they're when they're importing beans um 
uh, different roasters and stuff and, and just kind of validated everything. Um, and that is what we put in the journals that makes it different and interesting, um, along, along with the design aesthetic, Mm -hmm. which, um, I, I always kind of champion as, as very, very important. Um, I mean, I want people to be drawn to like one of the the posters or infographics aesthetically. And then when they get close and they look at it, they're like, Oh wow, it's really interesting. Look at all this information. Yeah. But if you don't, if you don't grab somebody visually first, then the rest of it is kind of a, a waste of time. So um, we might not land that every time, but uh, that that's our approach. And that's what we try to do. And, and I, I think that's what has made gold leaf uh kind of withstand, you know, the, the test of time in, in a way, um, and continues to, to kind of do well for us when we come out with new stuff. Absolutely. So let's talk about, um, you've got these fantastic products and you're getting things off the ground. How did you find your first couple customers? What, what did that look like? What was the kind of go-to-market strategy? So, uh, I'm trying to think back. Um, I, you know, we've really leaned hard on SEO, um, now that's that's a long game, mm-hmm. um, like the long view. Uh, but we started in the cannabis space, which I mentioned, and you couldn't have more red tape on it. You know, a subject. Maybe maybe there is subjects. <laughs> of course, there is. I think any like all the vice project products are just so hard to market in the traditional sense, which most yeah. people, just, Facebook and Instagram, imagine you can't do it with any of the vice products. You can't. You can't. And when I started, you could with some, which was fun. But um, they've they've brought the hammer down and have kneecapped us. And it's annoying because we don't technically violate any terms that anybody publishes. Uh, not even close. Um, but these these rules are enforced by bots that can't tell the difference between a book and, uh, you know, a bud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, we learned quickly that we had to rely on organic methods. Um, so we did, like I said, SEO, uh, which is, I think, paid off maybe year two and past, uh, in a big way, but initially it was, it was influencer marketing and, um, collaborations. Collaborations was huge. Mm-hmm. So we'd connect with another brand that, um, we liked, uh, resonated with us in some way that was doing something that we weren't. We would use them as an expert and develop an infographic or art print or journal, uh, alongside them. And then we'd release it and then we could all share it with our audiences and piggyback marketing from there. Uh, and that's been our bread and butter um, since 2016. And it it still works better than other marketing activities we do. Can I ask you a, a very direct question about SEO? Mm-hmm. What would you tell someone that was considering SEO, uh, you know, the minimum time they need to trust the process to before to start freaking out? Yeah, I the minimum time I six months. I, a year is even better. Two years is the best. Yeah. Uh, it, it really does take a long time and it, it, you have to be super intentional all along the way. So step one is get your technical SEO fixed up, cross all those T's dot the I's so that you're not getting penalized. And then step two is focusing more on the, the on page and off page stuff. Um, but it takes a while to pay off, but when it pays off, um, the, uh, insert derogatory term, um, Folks at Google and Amazon and uh, Facebook cannot take it from you um, just because they don't like what you're doing. So uh, unlike um, any other social media channel or you know marketplace like Amazon, SEO is a little bit more in your control and is a little bit more evergreen than than anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, Google is changing algorithms regularly. There's another 2022 update that's going to be pretty significant. So you know, you it, it takes effort, ongoing effort. Um, it really helps if you uh, like getting your hands dirty and are maybe proficient with whatever platform you're using, Shopify or, or Magento or something. Um, and, and know how to pull the, uh, pull the right levers, um, to, to fix those problems and, and stay ahead of the curve, uh, with, um, those, those changes that either the platform makes or that Google decides to make. If you're struggling with scaling your sales, maybe Electric Guy can help. Our team has helped our clients generate millions of dollars in additional revenue through our unique brand scaling framework. You can learn more about our agency at electriceye.io. That's E L E C T R I C E Y E.io. 
Mesa is the expansion pack for your Shopify store to level up your brand. By turning all your apps into your business epicenter, Mesa can help lighten your workload and tame the day-to-day chaos of running your store. Join successful brands like Mudwater, Chubbies, and Golden to learn how to use clever workflows to get more done without more overhead. Whether you need to order details in Google Sheets, products added on Etsy, or customer information updated in your CRM, Mesa connects your data where it's needed most. To put it quite simply, Mesa is a better way to work. Browse pre-made templates for Shopify's most popular apps to get your first automation up and running in minutes. Search Mesa, that's M-E-S-A, in the Shopify App Store and download the app today. Is your store holiday ready? Now is the time to make sure you and your team are prepared for the busy season ahead. Gorgeous, an omni-channel help desk built for e-commerce has machine learning functionality that takes the pressure off small support teams and gives them the tools to manage a large number of inquiries at scale, especially during the holiday season. Gorgeous combines all your different communication channels like email, SMS, social media, live chat, and even phone into one platform and gives you an organized view of all your customer inquiries. Their powerful functionality can save your support team hours per day and makes managing customer orders a breeze. Merchants can close tickets faster than ever with the help of pre-written responses integrated with customer data to increase the overall efficiency of customer support. Their built-in automations also free up time for support agents to give better answers to complex product-related questions, providing next-level support, which helps increase sales, brand loyalty, and recognition. Eric Bandholtz, the founder of Beard Brand, says, We're a seven-figure business, and we have essentially one person on customer support and experience. It's impossible to do it without tools such as Gorgeous to help us innovate. Learn how to level up your customer support by speaking to their team. Visit gorgeous.grsm.io slash honest. Mention this podcast when you sign up to get two months free. That's G-O-R-G-I-A-S dot G-R-S-M dot I-O slash H-O-N-E-S-T. Our partner Rewind can protect your Shopify store with automated backups of your most important data. Rewind should be the first app you install to protect your store against human error, misbehaving apps, and collaborators gone bad. It's like having your very own magic undo button. Trusted by over 100,000 businesses, from side hustles to the biggest online retailers like NYX, Gatorade, and Movement Watches. Best of all, respond to any of their welcome emails and mention this podcast, Honest Ecommerce, and get your first month absolutely free. Getting an online business off the ground isn't easy. So if you find yourself working late, tackling a to-do list that's a mile long with your fifth cup of coffee by your side, remember... Great email doesn't have to be complicated. That's what Klaviyo is for. It's the email and SMS platform built to help e-commerce brands earn more money by creating genuine customer relationships. Once you set up your free Klaviyo account, you can start sending beautiful branded messages in minutes thanks to drag and drop design templates and built-in guidance. And with e-commerce specific recommendations and insights, you can keep growing your business as you go. Get started with a free account at klaviyo.com slash honest. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash H-O-N-E-S-T. I'm going to ask you a few questions about SEO because I don't think I've actually uh, had uh, someone on the podcast, or at least not recently, that you, you know puts invested heavily in, into it. So um, first, I know you're on Shopify. Mm-hmm. There are some naysayers out there about the the SEO capabilities of Shopify. So what is your opinion? Yeah, I'm going to guess they're going to be complaining about... There's certain rigidity with Shopify. Um, and they're, for, for one, you shouldn't be using Google Lighthouse to, to test your page speed if you're on Shopify because that's not really built for CMSs like Shopify. So it's never going to give you a good score. And it's weird that Shopify uses that as a metric to show their viewers. I kind of think that that is an effort to get get people to hire uh, folks to improve their sites. Um, anyway, there has not been very many um, things in Shopify that you can't fix. You mentioned kind of like your... It was almost like a three-step thing of like, this is the action plan for SEO. It was A, fix technical SEO, which is more than likely kind of a one and done project, correct? Yeah, it kind of is. Um, once you do it, it's not going to change that fast. Unless you screw up adding alt tags to all of your images, everybody. Right. Yeah, you got to keep doing that. That's the thing we always tell people. It's like, we can fix all this stuff, but now you need to keep doing it as you keep adding content. Yeah. 
So you got to learn that process to them. So once that's done, um, you mentioned that then, then there's the on-page stuff and the off-page stuff. Uh, I'm going to throw out some guesses here on what those are. On-page stuff is content. Uh, producing quality content that resonates with your audience. Uh, obviously, you're investing a lot in, in long-form blog content. But there's other ways to do content. But it, it, you know, in the crux of that piece of the puzzle is content. And then the off-page stuff is basically backlink, backlinks that are driven by authority plays. Um, I oversimplified SEO, but is that kind of the... Yeah. I mean, those, those are definitely the, um, the big buckets, uh, that you, that you named there. Um, I, there, there are some really great strategies for the backlink stuff. Um, I do think it's a really good investment if you have a product that can support it to work with a PR team, yeah. uh, to, to help you get those backlinks. They're super valuable. And while you may be paying a good bit for a bit, for a while for, for the PR and effort, um, those are going to stack up and they're going to stay with you for a while. So I, I think that that's a really, really good thing to do. Um, yeah. And, and for the on page, you'll probably have to invest in some sort of, um, keyword tool like spy foo or SEM rush. If, if you really want to spend some money, um, but uh, keeping an eye on, on the search trends, you need to be writing content for what people type into Google, not what, you think it would be. Um, so it's a balancing act. Um, I found with SEO, there's nothing that's really a hill to die on or very few things, it, but it's it's going to be a sum of all the parts. So if there's something you just can't fix, maybe it's something with Shopify that's slightly limiting, like the the link structures. And you're like, geez, I can't, I can't get around this. It's probably not going to sink your ship. Just do good with everything else. Um, and... Uh, you know, in terms of the other on-page stuff, I, publishing regularly, um, and then if you can connect with um, oh other other media outlets who might want to um, aggregate your content, um, that's been really great for Goldleaf. Um, you know, we're we're a, a store; it's a Shopify site, but our our blog gets us a lot of traffic because we we spend a lot of um, intentional time making pieces that are intellectual they speak to our audience um and they're valuable to people so it, it's not like we don't have posts that are like um this is we're having a huge sale this is a sale come check out the sale yeah. or whatever uh, nobody wants to read that um instead we'll do um different roundups on uh maybe maybe changes in the legal cannabis space um maybe uh interviews with uh different artists or creatives um and then things that honestly our best blog posts uh are are ones that are like these here's 20 20 quotes about cannabis from famous creative people you know like <laughs> um it, not your Willie Nelson so much as like your Barack Obamas or something like people yeah. you wouldn't really think. And, um, people love quotes that, and I think that has really helped with the, the SEO, but yeah, I, I think that that's kind of the, the, uh, the cadence you'd want to approach it. Like first fix the technical problems, then make sure there's content, uh, regularly being published and then, do your outreach. Yeah. Um, social media is fine, but that's not, <laughs> that's not going to move the needle all that much. Those aren't backlinks. <laughs> no, no, it's, they're not. Um, so yeah, I, you, you summed it up well, um, to go back to your other question about the weaknesses of Shopify. Um, the link structure is something that people bitch and moan about all the time, which is like, get over it. Yeah, I, it's not a huge deal. Um, I, from my, from my experience working with gold leaf and then, kind of um helping out other brands um in the cannabis space cuz they all face these these this similar prohibition um and are are interested in ways to kind of organically punch through um it, that's not that's not the the uh, leak that is sinking your ship mm -hmm. um it, everything is is uh fixable with the Shopify site um and the things that aren't uh, aren't really going to be that big of a limiter. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't let that steer you away from the platform. I, if you're selling a product, I, I mean, I'm not endorsed by Shopify or anything, but I, I've not seen anything that comes close to the functionality that they bring. Um, there are ones that I like more from a, a development standpoint, um, but they're, they're lacking in the integrations and, you know, uh, 
something like Goldleaf, we we've got so many really important, helpful integrations that straight up save us from having to hire additional contractors or something like that. I have to ask you, you, you there's nerds out there and they, this is a question that people want. They're like, what's your tech stack? Blah, blah, blah. Like, I just want to get out ahead of this. Like, just because you have the same tech stack as Charlie and his team doesn't mean your business is going to change overnight. You got to have a strategy behind all, all this stuff. With that caveat, l- let the nerds know what you guys got plugged into your store. <laughs> all right. Um, I'll pull it up right now. So um, what are you guys using for email? Uh, Clavio. I knew it. It's great. We we were on MailChimp. Actually, we we converted to Clavio in the last six months. Uh, I was a long holdout with MailChimp, but um, we did leave right before they got sold to Intuit, and I'm glad because I don't. I think that that's gonna slowly sink that product. <laughs> there's some weird. There's some weirdness going on. It, it it's very weird stuff's happening. Yeah, indeed. So uh, here are some of my favorites, like. Um, Shopify specific, there's this plugin called uh, JSON LD for SEO. It's $300 plugin one time fee for for life. So the highest price tag I've seen, but it's one time. So pretty good, honestly. And what that does is it adds the schema markup um, to your whole site. Um, it's managed by a really great, uh, husband and wife team in California, and they just regularly update it. So every Google, uh, change is absorbed into this plugin immediately. Yep. And the support's great. Fantastic for, for fixing all the schema problems that Shopify is kind of terrible at. So there's one example of something of a challenge that you can fix. Um, I also really like, uh, crush picks is great for image optimiz- optimization. If you're not doing it on the front end, sometimes we forget. So that's nice. Um, we do a lot of bundles that are great for upsells. So we've got a bundle app that basically will take a bundle and strip it out to its child products and do inventory control for those child products. Very simple, super cheap. So that's great. Um, Let's see. We use Flexify now for Facebook product feeds. Uh, I know there's very deep integrations with Facebook and Shopify. However, they they freaking hate us because of our subject matter and just man the amount of of support calls and stuff we've had to do to fix stupid problems that are their fault is just crazy. So using a third party for the product feeds lets us to lets us send only what we tell them we want to send them which are stuff about coffee or or not cannabis related mm-hmm. at all and then it kind of shields them from um bringing the hammer down pointlessly for for transgressions they think that we did which we didn't so yeah that's a that's uh having a having a feed tool that isn't the native integration for any of the marketing things is something we highly recommend to anybody so this this is include this is facebook your facebook feed and your google feed pinterest whatever uh use a uh build it the "Quote unquote," the hard way, the, the 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 not don't use the native Shopify integration because the the it, they make a lot of choices for you, and if you want to if yeah. you want to have a more performant marketing effort, uh, you need to do it like the more traditional way. Yeah, agreed. the The other ones I'll call out: um, orderly emails. I've never seen another plugin that does this, and it's I can't believe it. But basically, it it makes you. It makes you able to edit all of your Shopify notifications in like a drag and drop way. It pulls in even your custom fonts, custom colors, um, and it's it's really easy to build. You can add calls to action, so it's a way to uh, finesse all of your notifications without any code needed. So that one's awesome. And then I really so the, that one that one's so cool because the, there is so much opportunity for upsells and cross sells within those notifications that mm-hmm. the stock ones just don't have. Yeah, this <laughs> the stock ones are hilariously uh, underpowered. The other one I'll suggest uh, is Order Desk. Um, I'm not sure if you've heard of that one, but it's another um, super tool that uh, we really rely on heavily. And uh, so basically what that does is it takes all of our orders from Orderdesk or from Shopify, as well as Amazon or Etsy or uh, QuickBooks or wherever. And it all it all brings them in there. And then it's like a IFTTT or Zapier type thing where we can build a whole litany of rules 
to split things up, uh, to, I guess, sanitize the orders in a way that, that we want. And that's great for us. Again, small team, um, trying to automate things. We want to, um, you know, we utilize different, uh, print partners, some stuff we stock ourselves and fulfill some stuff is going to be at FBA. Some stuff, um, might be at a, a print on demand spot if it's like a custom piece or project. Um, so this basically automates all of that. Um, again, it does a few things that I've never seen any other plugin do, um, or plugin or, or standalone software. I've got a background in, in operations. So I love to kind of geek out on that kind of stuff. Um, you know, we utilize ship ship station at our, uh, workshop, but order desk is still the brains behind everything. So if you have any like shipping, weird shipping stuff, or, you know, needing to break up products, break up orders into different, uh, sub orders or anything like that, I'd highly recommend order desk. They integrate with damn near everybody on the planet. Um, so even if you're using some boutique, uh, drop shipper or printer, chances are order desk either, natively um integrates or has some sort of custom piece that you can build your own so highly recommend that one um we probably have about 20 other plugins but the, <laughs> those are the those are definitely the highlights those are the winners yeah the winners thanks for for running through that and you know just hopping into the back end of your store and doing that, that that's fantastic um Oh man, we've talked about a whole bunch of stuff. Is there anything that I, I didn't ask you that you think it, it would resonate with our audience? Let's see. I, I I'm always kind of curious to know like what we miss on on social media. Um, we we really only focus on Instagram because it's so visual mm-hmm. and we're a visual brand. Um, you know, and we we dabble in Pinterest. I would say those two was where we spend our time and where most of our audience is. But we we're totally lackluster in the fe- Facebook ecosystem. Uh, besides Instagram, I guess um, Twitter is kind of a shit show. Um, at least at least for us, where I don't want to be glued to my phone commenting on people or whatever. Um, so yeah, I I, th- I guess that, that that's kind of me posing a question. But um, I I would just be curious to uh, hear your expertise on on what you what you say to to you know, aspiring entrepreneurs and stuff in terms of the investment in, in social. Uh, cause t- to my eye, it only serves one purpose, which is the optics of like, are you big or not or alive? <laughs> and once you, co- yeah. And once you check that box, it, I mean, it, it's not a huge refer referral source for us. Um, we'll do giveaways and stuff and, you know, it's a way to connect with other people in the space, but it's, it's pretty much just like dead weight. Um, and I guess that's unfortunate, but I don't know. Uh, so I think for your brand, right? You know what works and you 80-20 your, your marketing and you know where the efficiencies are and you know what levers to pull that are actually going to get you results. So I actually think that you're being cognizant of like, we don't need to be there because that's not where our audience is, is a, actually a smart and tactical business decision. Um, and when I'm talking to younger entrepreneurs in their journey... I always say like focus on like one channel, maybe two channels and make those things work for you before you even begin to explore other kind of marketing avenues. Um, so yeah, again, it goes back to like, where is my audience? If I was going to make like a vintage Harley t-shirt brand, I'm not going to go and find those customers on Twitter, right? They're, they're not going to be there. <laughs> uh, you know, I got to go where the customers are, you know, maybe Pinterest, if I'm going more for a, a younger woman vibe, like that would probably crush it for me. Um, but you know, the, it, you just got to know where your, your audience is. Um, and then obviously, if yeah. everything's important, nothing's important. So like the shotgun spray approach, we have to be everywhere on every channel on every, every type of social and every marketing avenue. You're going to be spread so thin that it's all going to be garbage and nothing's going to work. Yeah, well well put. I totally agree on that and I don't I, that's kind of the path that we traversed uh without necessarily knowing it. Um I, I when we started down the social rabbit hole, I I wanted to do it from a visual standpoint like I said and you know to to try and grow that original audience and we we got up to like 40,000 uh, whatever's on, on Instagram pretty quick, but 
the past few years, it's been kind of stagnant. Um, one, one theory that, um, cause I, I do have somebody who, who does our social media for us and she does a great job. Um, but, uh, we, we are, we suffer from being sort of shadow banned, um, off and on. And that is a tough nut to crack. Um, again, stupidly, we haven't done anything wrong. You know, in fact, most of our material comes from the, the, the scientific or medical angle. We never endorse anything. We've never touched the, the product, the cannabis itself. Um, so, I mean, we've, we've walked this like perfect line of being like good stewards of the subject, but you know, we just get hit with these shadow bans We're shadow banned on Amazon. And, um, it, it, it's still kind of a problem with Instagram. It, it's really annoying. And that's, that's why I, I give the advice that like, if you're in any sort, any sort of vice, don't put too much investment into these, these channels that you don't own because they can be, they can change immediately and totally ruin your business or be taken from you without warning or even by like some stupid accident. Um, you know, I, I, I've talked to lots of brands in the cannabis space, you know, mostly in the, in the CBD world or whatever, um, that have had something like that happen. They, they go through these, uh, huge expensive agencies, build this following on social, and then they maybe did one thing that they shouldn't have and, and their accounts get, uh, taken down or, or whatnot. And they're kind of just left with nothing to show for their efforts. Um, so, I mean, that, that's kind of the horror story. I, I don't expect that to be the case with most folks, but, um, definitely in, in the current, uh, like CBD climate. Um, and it's funny that the hammer came down on all this stuff after the farm bill in, in, was that 2018? When when Trump passed the farm bill legalizing hemp, CBD or whatever, mm -hmm. that actually made um, the the uh, I guess prohibitions or whatever way worse. Um, everybody got way more diligent with snuffing out anything, and probably because there are tons of bad actors in the CBD space. And I remember when that passed, every other uh, kind of like applicant to work with us was trying to jump in and do a CBCD startup, uh, yeah. I mean, more cash grab than actual, you know, correct business plans. But uh, yeah, yeah, I saw that too. And that, I, that's certainly what sank the ship because there were so many people, uh, and, and some of them would talk to us cause we do a lot of B2B custom work for, uh, other cannabis brands, like creating education and graphic design and stuff. And they would ask us to like, Hey, could you tweak the truthfulness of this statement or something? Um, yeah, and we're just like, well, I'm not going to be working with you guys. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a pretty easy litmus test to to be like, yeah, we're actually busy. Yeah, yeah, it's like, why did you ask us about this, awesome. Charlie? This was a fantastic <laughs> interview. Uh, hopefully, I'll have you on again next year and kind of see what's changed, what's going on. Um, for the people that are curious about the the products and they want to go check them out, where should they go? Yeah, um, shopgoldleaf.com, all one word. Uh, that's the best place. Uh, it's our Shopify site. You can see the front end of all those lovely plugins I talked about. Um, and that's going to, if anybody is looking for stuff for Christmas, that's going to be the place that will probably get it to you before Christmas. The other avenues are going to be jammed up. Absolutely. Charlie, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you, Chase. Good talking to you. All right. I can't thank our guests enough for coming on the show and sharing their knowledge and journey with us. We've got a lot to think about and potentially add into our own business. You can find all the links in the show notes. Make sure you head over to honestecommerce.co to check out all of the other amazing content that we have. Make sure you subscribe, leave a review. And obviously, if you're thinking about growing your business, check out our agency at electriceye.io. Until next time.